Alaska is one of the original legendary ships in World of Warship Legends. It was actually the very first Bureau ship I ever researched, believe it or not. Quite a bit has changed in the game since she first came out, including a whole nother tier right below it. And it begs the question, is Alaska still good in 2023? A quick rundown first. Alaska is a super cruiser. The guns are 305 millimeters. She has radar, sonar. When I think of her, I think of a small battleship or a battle cruiser really. By cruiser standards, she's an absolute tank, but not quite up to battleship armor. The guns are amazing. She has American AP with improved penetration angles. The shell velocity is kind of slow, but a few games in her and you'll get the hang of it. The game in the background is a pretty recent one from the Marlboro campaign. And a little forewarning, a Marlboro was harmed very badly in the making of this video. It's one of those small crossplay matches that I really, really dislike, and to be honest, I almost left and didn't play the match, but I'm glad I did because it's one of the best comeback stories I have ever had in this game. And the gameplay also highlights what the Alaska is still capable of, and a decent breakdown of how to play her. Now, I'm setting Alaska up with aiming systems, prop mod, concealment and main battery mod. The commander for this game, I believe, was Victor Einstein, but currently I'm testing a new Alaska build with Shelly Beepley. Ingenious and full speed ahead are some of the best cruiser skills a commander can have in slots one and two, in my opinion, and she has a skill called Private Zone that buffs concealment and shows you the nearest ship, so very, very, very good. After that, straight up accuracy inspirations with Sharn Horse and Scott. If you're free to play, you will do just fine with Norm Scott and a full DPM build. If you are doing that build, though, I would use Makawa and Muller just to buff the concealment and the speed a little bit. On Alaska, I'm always choosing fully packed over refill station for the extra consumables. The heals are just too good. 12,000 health apiece, so a third one is fantastic. Plus more radar and sonar means you're a threat to DDs all the way till the bitter end. So with the Des Moines gone, we're going to start heading more towards the middle of the map and we'll grab a cap along the way. We initially went wide over here because I considered myself faster than the Yamato. I kind of thought that he would stay at A and not flank. That's typically what Yamatos do. So that was my reasoning for going wide, just so that we could set up some crossfires. He ended up going out there with me. That's okay. It turns out he's a very, very, very good player. So uh, shout out to him. Uh, we win this game largely because of of his gameplay. So like mentioned, Alaska is a rather tanky cruiser, maybe not quite as much as the Stalingrad, definitely not as much as Napoli, but with around 55,000 health and good armor, she's resilient. 32 millimeter bow is great, a solid armor belt and a citadel at the waterline that can be kind of hard to access. I know recently in the Napoli, I've been struggling to hit Alaska Citadel. So yeah, it's below the waterline, kind of hard to get. Far tankier than the Yoshino. The guns have both great HE and AP performance, although mostly I would stick to the AP. And right now in the game, we can see that it is 2v4. <laughs> this was about the time that I was thinking of just sailing to the bottom corner of the map and going and getting a snack. But alas, the tryhard in me just wouldn't, wouldn't let me. So the AP has improved pin angles. You can slap ships that are well angled, honestly. If they show you just a little bit too much broadside, you can get full penetrations. The HE has great 27% fire chance though, so when you need to light bow taking ships on fire, it does pretty well. We get a lucky fire on the Burgonia here, and it's going to help tick away his damage as he sails towards our Yamato. And my thinking right now, right here, is just to try to get up a little bit closer and shoot the Burgonia and the Marco Polo as they sail directly at the Yamato. That's what's on my mind. Try to set up some crossfires, get enough of their health off that maybe Yamato can finish them off. Now, compared to the other big boys at LT, and there are four now that I'm putting in this category, the Yoshino, Alaska, Stalingrad, and the Napoli. Alaska really holds her own in terms of damage output, probably being among the most well-rounded with damage output among her AP and HE shells. She also has some of the best AA at the tier. She does fall behind the other big girls at the tier though in speed. She has a good turning circle and a modest rudder. Overall, I really like how Alaska handles, especially after playing the Stalingrad. You just, I feel stuck in the Stalingrad without much options for turning or getting into tight spots like we are here in the Alaska. So I really love the way she moves around the map. And one of the best things for this ship though, for how big she is, she is very, very well concealed. 
with the Beeply build, we're at 10.8 kilometers. That's without Makawa or Swarski, so no inspirations for it at all. So this lets you get into pretty tight spots early game. Now here comes the Marlboro. Marlboro is not a ship that you really want to be up close with anything that has solid AP because the Citadel is just massive and above the waterline. So we're going to wait for him to get up here and see if we can pin the Citadel. And pin it we do with five Citadels and we'll quickly try to get the back gun on as well. And there we go. That was basically a full health Marlboro. And with that, we can win this game. <laughs> so I was very excited at this point. Alaska does pretty good in the open water. I think it's really quite a nuisance to have like this battle cruiser ship sailing around in the open water. She can be hard to hit, and when you do hit her, she's very tanky. So yeah, she does good in the open water. But personally, I like to sail up pretty close early game and get next to islands and use island cover. If you can get her sneakily close to an objective or close to a cap to help push destroyers back. That's a really great way to play the Alaska. Not to mention that her floaty shells can lob islands pretty well, as we're going to demonstrate against uh, the last ship we come across here. And it makes it harder to aim at long ranges. In a Stalingrad video I did, oh gosh, I don't even know, months and months ago now, I did a comparison of how quickly Stalingrad shells can get to a target at, say, 16 kilometers, and how quickly Alaska can. And the Stalingrad, the Soviet shells, they get to targets like two seconds faster. It is a dramatic, dramatic difference. So playing at closer ranges will help you in your accuracy with the Alaska. So now it's 2v1. Oh, how the turn tables, huh, Mr. Yamato? <laughs> and uh, here at the end here, I kind of sailed very aggressively at the Marco Polo, and then now I'm doing the same with Yamato, because our Yamato is on very, very low health, and if he dies, it's going to alter the points by 100 points, and we would lose. So I'm trying to put myself in between the Yamato and my Yamato to try to keep him alive. I don't know if he was using will to rebuild. I never looked at his health, but that was another reason to get close to him to try to keep him alive using that wonderful skill, will to rebuild. But anyways, Yamato's coming around the corner here, and with my shell velocity being slower and being able to lob this island, I'm probably going to be able to get a pretty punishing shot on him before he can shoot me. So we'll see how that plays out here. Maybe we can rack up another Citadel. And we get some solid, solid damage. And at this point, I probably should have sailed out, got greedy, and uh, tried to pick up another kill. But anyways, we're still playing it safe here. Alaska in 2023. I feel like she's still a very, very capable ship. And honestly, I enjoy her more than the Stalingrad. And uh, she doesn't cost 2 million global XP. I think she still has what it takes. Some of these pay-to-win commanders really uh, take her up a notch, I feel like. But you can still do good if you have Norman Scott or uh, the other guy. Anyways, guys, let me know what you guys think of Alaska down below. Are you still playing her? I've kind of neglected her for a while, but it's been fun to go back and play her again. I, I think the Napoli is more fun than the Alaska personally, but I would place Alaska over the Yoshino and the Stalingrad. Just my two cents. Anyways, thanks guys for sticking around. I always appreciate the support. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Catch you in the next one. See ya.